this TV station came in and uh, they were highlighting the world's most dangerous food, animal, places, and person. And uh, they elected me uh, as their uh, person, as the world's most dangerous man. You gotta remember back in the day, this was in 94, I believe it was, uh, we weren't looked at very well. We were like people that were animals and cockfighting, human cockfighting. And so it wasn't, we weren't getting a lot of pleasant reviews. So when they came in and wanted to do the story, I basically was like, hold up, what's your angle? Because I had three kids obviously and a family and I didn't want to drag them through any unnecessary public criticism. What they wanted to do, which I think turned the tide of how people looked at us, we became uh, human. We became uh, no different than the rest of people were doing out there. We just did something different for our job. And it, it added uh, some humanity to who we were and what we were. We weren't these people that came out of prison and we were killing people. There was a constant battle and a constant war. That's kind of that area that we lived in. Georgia, where I grew up, and at a young age, you're constantly fighting people and constantly in and out of trouble. Yeah, it wasn't pretty, and we moved to Napa, which was more middle class. And uh, it was pretty much predominantly African American in, in where I lived at in Georgia. And then we moved to this all white neighborhood. And I remember being there, I did not fit in. I did not relate well to people. I didn't understand the culture. I dressed differently, I acted differently, I talked differently. And I remember in school, my first day, I was in grade school, and these kids started talking about me. I was 10 years old at this time. And I saw them talking, and I saw the crowd start to gather. Just put my back up against the wall because I knew that something was going to happen. I, at least I had some protection. So these kids started walking up, and I remember in my mind, I'm like, okay. I've got to figure out which one of these guys is the alpha male, which one of these guys is the leader. So we started talking about, well, after school, we're going to meet behind the gym at 3 o'clock and we're going to fight. And I was like, I didn't understand that, right? That this never happened where I was at. But he said the word fight. Now, I knew that, and I hit him. And as I hit him, he went down, and I started kicking him, face, body, everywhere, because I didn't want him to get up. I knew I had a couple other I had to deal with. So as I'm kicking him, I'm waiting for me to get hit, because I know I'm going to get hit. As soon as I feel that punch, I'm punching in the same direction. I'm 10 years old. Nobody hits me. So I look up, and these guys are running. They're gone. I got sent home from school, first day, and that's, that's where I knew who I was and what I was going to be. There was no love, I don't remember being hugged, I don't remember being told I love you, I don't remember any of that stuff. So what that did was that, you know, you have a couple different kinds of characters, right? One of them is like they feel victimized. And the other character is the one that does the victimizing, which is what I became. Because I wasn't gonna allow somebody to victimize me. When I finally got the chance to fight him, where it was going to be even, mano a mano, like there was no family involved, it was just me and him in the ring, he needs me in the nuts. And the ref doesn't see it, they raise his hand, and then he goes into the press conference and says, well, that's how we used to fight, like he did it on purpose. And so it was one of those things when people mention his name, I respect him. I respect him as a fighter and what he did for the sport and what he did uh, with beating a lot of guys. But on the flip side of that, I also know what kind of person he is outside the ring and that I can't see anybody accepting a win, knowing that you landed a low shot, knowing that you did that and then you just saying, oh yeah, I beat him. The company could not pay me what I needed to. I had fighter's house, I had gyms, I had family, I had a group home for kids, all these things I was supporting. 
And I wasn't able to make the money I needed to because they were constantly in and out of uh, court trying to get fights to go on in these different states. So they were, they were just spending a lot of money. And I remember when my time came up, I was promised a certain thing for a contract. And, and Bob Myers came to me and said, hey, I just, you know, we just don't have the money right now. We're constantly in and out of court. I can't pay you what, what you need. And I said, well, I understand that, Bob. I do. I truly do. So, but I got to do something else because I can't support my family with what I'm going to be getting. And I said, that would be a problem. I said, but I'm going to go do something. And when we get this thing figured out and starts rolling, I'll come back. So that's when I went into pro wrestling. Trained with Bret Hart. Uh, helped me understand the psychology of wrestling um, and how to take that world's most dangerous man and be able to put it in a pro wrestling ring. And I, that's what I took most from Bret when he talked to me. He was like, don't be these guys, be you. And so when I went in against Vader, the very first match there, we went at it. Great match, I enjoyed it, um, fans loved it. And that was an experience for me because then I got an understanding about what I really needed to do to be a pro wrestler. Things that didn't happen I thought should have happened. There's Brock Lesnar, there's Kurt Angle. The one thing I can say that can still happen would be The Rock. The Rock is somebody that I respect and have always respected because we cut our teeth on one another and really built our characters and our careers together. And I've always thought that I missed that opportunity uh, to go up and really come after that um, heavyweight belt. And there would be, you know, The Rock and Stone Cold and Bret Hart and myself. And there would be like this four-way thing that we would just kind of go after each other. And it just never happened. It just stopped. When I had blown my knee out, from that point on, I was never the same. Uh, I could never shoot like I was used to, never could do submissions like I used to. Started losing fights, but in my mind, I always felt I could overcome it. I kept trying to, because that's my mentality. I'll never give up. I'll always keep trying to find a way to win. I don't quit, I keep trying. I'd always had been under a doctor's care, uh, growth hormone and testosterone for TRT replacement, especially as I got into my 40s. You know, um, I started regressing injuries and stuff like that. So I went into a doctor and he started putting me on these different things and it helped me actually regress my age and be able to still keep competing. But I had to go off before we go in there and fight, you know. So on the off season, I would do that just for my health. I didn't realize um, when I was going into a fight Kimbo that uh, in Texas, normally they just don't do drug tests, right? And so I thought I'd just stay on my medical, um, that what I was already on. And then I was going and fight and I would be fine. Well, come to find out they were testing. And so I had three weeks prior to that. Um, so I tried to come off and I started, you know, doing all the cardio and sweating and doing everything I can to try to get everything out. And I was, like I said, it was very minimal. It's just enough that um, being under doctor's care that would help me slow down the radical development and getting old. And uh, it just didn't work out that way. Just recently, I went up to Columbia, um, David Tarut, who introduced me to these stem cells. And I went up there and did this stem cell treatment, bioaccelerator and it's been a game changer. And it is the best decision I've ever made because it's almost like it's put me 20 years back. I, I couldn't raise my hand above my head. My knees were aching. I had to be on all these anti-inflammatories. I'm off. I don't take any of that stuff. And it's just been amazing. I always tell people I don't, I'm not gonna retire because that's, I mean, other people it's fine, but for me it's quitting. I can't do it. I can say that I'm not going to fight, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that, but I will always mentally be in it, even though I'm not in it. Yeah, what I want is for people to know that I gave my all. You know, when I walked in there, I put on a fight. It didn't matter how old I was, it didn't matter how young I was, it didn't matter what the opponent was, I came in to fight. And then I had always, throughout my career, wanted to make sure that the fans appreciated me. I wanted to make sure they liked what I was doing. And if they didn't, find a way for them to do that. 
I want people to know that, that I cared.